Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It is I, Teacher Liz, here with another episode of Ability to Learn on the Discovery Day program. Today, I'll be sharing with you some cool observances, interesting history, cool facts, cool animals, and plants. And let's not forget, there's a new Spanish word to learn and a new place to explore this week. And also, don't forget to log in every day to the live Zoom sessions provided every day by the Discovery Educational Team. Now let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for today's observances. Happy Monday, Discovery Learners! It's August 2nd, 2021, and this is your teacher, Liz, bringing you the observances for today. The first observance is National Coloring Book Day. National Coloring Book Day on August 2nd recognizes the joy children and adults alike derive from coloring pages of designs. Coloring and coloring books have always been popular with children, but over the years, adults have gotten more and more involved with coloring. Obviously, adult coloring is now a huge trend. Many find it not only fun, but also a great way to reduce stress. With so many colors and designs to choose from, coloring offers enjoyment in so many settings. They're portable, they come in a variety of sizes, Take coloring books on vacation with you for a rainy days or to document a fun memory. Coloring books also make a great gift all year long. When someone visits, be sure to leave a coloring book and colors in the guest room for downtime. At the office, keep a variety of coloring books in the break room for coworkers to fill up. So how do we observe National Coloring Book Day? Maybe you go find a coloring party near you and participate. Or maybe participate online. Spend some time coloring with your friends, children, or grandchildren, or just by yourself. Enjoy the creativity of making a picture come to life. Or maybe you could download an app and color by the number. Whatever you decide to do, go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Our next observance for today is... National Ice Cream Sandwich Day! Mmm! On August 2nd, National Ice Cream Sandwich Day encourages us to cool off with one of our favorite frozen treats. Whether it's vanilla, strawberry, or Neapolitan between the two chocolate wafers, the dessert sure will hit the spot on a hot summer day. The original ice cream sandwich sold for a penny in 1900 from a push cart in the Bowery neighborhood of New York. Newspapers never identified the name of the vendor in the articles that appeared across the country. However, the ice cream sandwich between the milk biscuits became a hit. Soon, push carts popped up all around the city and the country during the summer months selling the portable treats. Early pictures show beachgoers at Atlantic City getting their ice cream sandwiches for one penny each. Once ice cream sandwiches became popular, recipes for home cooks filled the papers. The sandwich layers included everything from angel food and sponge cake to shortbread cookies. Restaurants offered ice cream sandwiches as a delicate dessert for travelers. And by 1940, grocery stores sold sandwiches made with crispy wafers. One account claims the modern ice cream sandwich with chocolate wafer was invented in 1945 by Jerry Newberg. The ice cream maker sold his creation to Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At the time, the story location was home to the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Steelers. If the chocolate brownie wafer doesn't appeal to you, don't hesitate to mix it up. All variety of cookies make excellent sandwich parts. Change up the ice cream too. Around the world, ice cream sandwiches go by a variety of names including the Morocco Bar, Giant Sandwich, Mixabon, Cream Between, Vanilla Slice, and many more. So how do you observe ice cream sandwich day? Well, the easiest way is to enjoy an ice cream sandwich today. Or maybe make your own with different ice cream flavors and sandwich components. So how do you like your ice cream sandwich? Go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. 
And our last observance for today is actually observance for yesterday on Sunday. I thought it was interesting enough to mention it for you all today. National Friendship Day. On the first Sunday in August, which was yesterday, National Friendship Day encourages people across the country and around the world to connect with their friends, make new friends, or reconnect with an old one. Friendships come in many forms, and we begin developing them when we're very young. Throughout our lives, friendships and their meanings evolve. Our classmates, our neighborhood pals, explore the world with us. Together we shared experiences and made plans for the future. Eventually, paths diverged and new friends find place in our social experience. Our world expands and our culture changes. With each new friend, we expand our view on the world. Their experiences contribute to new meetings in our lives. Through friendships, we grow and broaden our horizons. Eventually, the world becomes smaller and more connected. So how do we observe National Friendship Day? Celebrate with the friends you have and the new ones you have yet to meet. Get in contact with your buddies. Chat with them on the phone or virtually visit them through Zoom. Share a memory with an old friend to spark a fun conversation. And don't forget to tell your friends how much you appreciate them. So do you have any friends that come to mind when we celebrate Friendship Day? Well, if you do, go ahead and let us know in the comment section below. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history. Today, in 1776, the formal signing of the U.S. Declaration of Independence by 56 people occurs. The signing of the United States Declaration of Independence occurred primarily on July 4, 1776, at the Pennsylvania State House, Independence Hall, in Philadelphia. The 56 delegates of the Second Continental Congress represented the 13 colonies, 12 of which voted to approve the Declaration of Independence on July 2, 1776. The New York delegation abstained because they did not receive instructions from Albany to vote for independence. The Declaration proclaimed the signatory colonies were now free and independent states, no longer colonies of the Kingdom of Great Britain, and thus no longer part of the British Empire. The signers' names were grouped by state, with the exception of John Hancock as the President of the Continental Congress. The states arranged geographically from south to north with Button Ginwit from Georgia first and Matthew Thornton from New Hampshire last. The final draft of the declaration was approved by Continental Congress on July 4th, although the date of the signing has long been disputed. Most historians have concluded that it was signed on August 2nd, 1776, nearly a month later after its adoption, and not on July 4th as commonly believed. Today, in 1961, the Beatles' first gig as house band of Liverpool's Cavern Club. The Cavern Club at 10 Matthew Street in Liverpool was the venue where the Beatles, formerly known as the Quarrymen, UK popularity started. John Lennon, Paul McCarthy, George Harrison, and Pete Best were first seen by Brian Epstein at the club. Epstein eventually became their manager, going on to secure them a record contract. Best was replaced by Ringo Starr in August 16, 1962, which upset many Beatles fans. After taunts of Peter Forever, Ringo Never, one alleged fan headbutted Harrison in the club. The Cavern Club was the third club managed by Ellen Steiner, which originally opened in a jazz club only on January 16, 1957, being styled after Paris venue, Le Chavou. The Quarrymen made their first appearance in the club August 7, 1957. By the 9th of February, 1961, the group performed under their new name, The Beatles. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Wes Craven, born August 2nd, 1939 in Cleveland, Ohio. 
this American director who introduced the world to the terrifying Freddy Krueger in the Nightmare on Elm Street series and redefined the horror genre with his semi-satirical horror comedy Scream Films. He also directed the horror film The Hills Have Eyes and The Last House on the Left, Red Eye, and Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Before he was famous, he worked as a professor of English at Westminster College and Humanities at Clarkson College of Technology before landing his first film job as a sound editor for the New York City post-production company. He unfortunately passed away August 30th of 2015 at the age of 76. But another interesting trivia to know about him is that in 1995, he received a Life Career Award from the Academy of Science Fiction, Fantasy, and Horror Films. Wow! Happy birthday, Wes Craven! Our next notable figure born today is Kevin Smith, born August 2nd, 1970 in Red Bank, New Jersey. This American producer and director of iconic slacker hits such as Clerks, Mall Rats, Chasing Amy, Dogma, and Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. He also starred in a number of his films, played by the character Silent Bob alongside Jay, who was portrayed by his good friend Jason Muse. Before he was famous, he was raised as a Catholic in New Jersey. He avidly collected comic books, especially DC comics, like Batman. He turns 51 years old today. Happy birthday, Kevin Smith. Another notable figure born today is Sam Worthington, born August 2nd, 1976 in Galdaling, England. This Australian actor who earned international fame for his leading role in the 2009 science fiction adventure film Avatar. Often cast in action roles, he also starred as Perseus in Clash of the Titans and as Marcus Wright in Terminator Salvation. Before he was famous, after dropping out of college, he worked as a bricklayer and a construction worker while living in Queensland. The National Institute of Dramatic Art gave him a scholarship while he was working as a bricklayer. He turns 45 years old today. Wow. Happy birthday, Sam Worthington. And now for our last noble figure born today is Edward Furlong. Born August 2nd, 1977 in Glendale, California. This American actor starred as the rebellious 10-year-old John Connor in Terminator 2, Judgment Day. His role in Pet Cemetery 2 earned him a Saturn Award. Before he was famous, he was discovered for his acting role while at the Boys and Girls Club. He played John Connor in Terminator 2, Judgment Day and never finished high school. Wow, Terminator 2. That's actually my favorite Terminator movie. He turns 44 years old today. Happy birthday, Edward Furlong. Happy birthday, everyone. Come along, Discovery Learners, as we explore a new place of the week. This week we are traveling to Vietnam. And do you hear that song in the background, Discovery Learners? Well, yes, that's the national anthem of Vietnam. Now, as you give that a listen to, let's go ahead and discuss a little bit more about the Vietnamese flag. This nation's flag consists of a red field with a large yellow star in the center. The five points of the star is said to represent the five principal classes composing the political front. The Poletriet, the Peasantry, the Military, Intellectuals, and the Petty Bourgeoisie. Hmm, pretty interesting symbolism for a flag. Now why don't we go ahead and learn a little more about Vietnam. Vietnam is a country located in Southeastern Asia, with China to the north, Laos, and Cambodia to the west with the Philippines separated by the South China Sea to the east. Vietnam's official name is the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. Its form of government is a socialist republic with one legislative house, the National Assembly. Its head of state is a president 
and its head of government is a prime minister. The capital of Vietnam is Hanoi, and the official language is Vietnamese. The most popular religion in Vietnam is, surprisingly, Catholicism, with Buddhism at a very close second. Vietnam's main monetary unit is the Dong, or the VND. 22,963 Vietnamese Dongs equals 1 US dollar. The current population of Vietnam is 97,591,000 people. The total area of Vietnam is 127,891 square miles. That's around the same size of the US state of Arizona. The main exports of Vietnam are cell phone technology, textiles, electronic goods such as computers, and footwear. Wow, Vietnam looks and sounds like a very interesting country. And we can't wait to teach you more. So be sure to stay tuned all week long as we teach you more about Vietnam here on Ability to Learn. Wow. Now that's a really interesting place of the week. Here is the animal of the day. Today's animal is the tapir. Tapirs are large mammals that look like pigs with prolonged snouts. These animals can be found in Central and South America and Asia like in Sumatra and Malaysia. Tapirs live in swamps, grasslands, forests, and mountains. There are four types of tapirs. Bard's tapir, lowland tapir, mountain tapir, and Malaysian tapir. All species except lowland tapir are endangered due to increased hunting and habitat loss. Here are some interesting facts about the tapir. Tapirs weigh from 500 to 700 pounds and can reach 29 to 42 height at the shoulders. Wow, Malaysian tapirs is the largest and the mountain tapir is the smallest species. Closest relatives of tapirs are horses and rhinos. Tapirs have not changed much in the last 10 million years. They also have four toes on their front feet and three toes on their back feet. They're herbivores. That means they eat leaves or grass. They eat leaves and fruit twice a day. These animals are ecologically important because they disperse seeds of plants through their droppings as they move from one location to another, helping plants to grow. Their snouts are a fusion of their nose and upper lip. It facilitates in eating. Tapirs use it to grab leaves from nearby branches, pick up fruit from the ground, or to find aquatic plants from the bottom of the water. The group of tapirs is called a candle. Interesting. Tapirs communicate verbally via high-pitched sounds. They like to spend a lot of time in water because the water cools them down and helps them removing up parasites. Tapirs can spend few minutes under the water. They use their snouts as snorkels. And if they needed to hide underwater for a longer period of time, they can. You know, just in case there's sides in danger. Jaguars, tigers, crocodiles, and anacondas hunt tapirs. After 13 months of pregnancy, one calf will be born. As long as the mother produces milk, the young tapir will eat. Baby tapirs have specific yellow and white stripes and spots on reddish brown fur, which provides excellent camouflage. After a few months, when they lose these marks, they look like miniature versions of the adult animal. Tapirs live about 25 to 30 years in the wild and about 30 years while in captivity. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is the black bat flower. Black bat flowers is a plant that belongs to the yam family. There are 10 species of bat flowers that differ in size, color, and type of habitat where they can be found. Black bat flowers are native to tropical parts of southeastern Asia, such as China, Thailand, and Burma. Tropical areas is the natural habitat of the black bat flower. It requires high humidity, shade, and well-drained soil, which are definitely essential for its proper growth and development of this plant. 
People cultivate the black bat flower because of its large decorative leaves and unique type of flowers. Unfortunately, the black bat flower is very rare in the wild and cannot be cultivated easily because it can only survive under specific environmental conditions, thus making the black bat flower an endangered plant. Here are some interesting facts about the black bat flower. The black bat flower can only grow to a height of 36 inches. It has large bright green leaves with a smooth texture. This flower also has an underground bulb, which is used for storing nutrients. The most impressive part of the black bat flower, as its name suggests, is its flower. It consists of two large brackets, which are leaves that look like petals, and long filaments, which are modified leaves that fork at the ends, dark color brackets that look like wings, while filaments reversible whiskers of a bat, hence the name. Flowers of the black bat flower are about 12 inches wide and have 28 inches long filaments. First flower will appear on a plant with a full development for at least three to four weeks. The black bat flower has purple to black flowers, but they also can be maroon, bronze, brown, and green colored. Recently discovered close relative of the black bat flower is the white bat flower. It differs from black bat flower in the color of brackets. Instead of black, the white bat flower has white brackets. The black bat flower blooms in late spring to early autumn. This plant can bloom 8 times per season and produce 6 to 12 flower stems during that period. Black bat flowers can be propagated by division of ribosome and tubular via seeds. Propagation by a seed requires time and patience. Healthy seeds are formed only when capsules filled with seed matures naturally and splits while it's still on the plant. This process may last up to 18 months. Germation of the seed may last nearly 12 months. The black bat flower doesn't like greenhouses because they lack breeze. These plants require some conditions, amount humidity, light, and air, as orchids for successful growth. Luckily, pests don't attack the bat bat flowers. Unusual morphology of the plant is responsible for a widely spread superstition. Allegedly, an evil eye will start stalking you if you spend too much time looking at the plant. <laughs> According to another false belief, too much watching of the plant may result in sudden death of an individual or some of her or his close relatives. Yikes! The black bat flower is a perennial plant, which means it completes its life cycle after a year or more. It's that time again! We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. The word of the day. Today's word is pretentious. It's spelled P-R-E-T-E-N-T-I-O-U-S. It's an adjective. It means attempting to impress by affecting greater importance or merit than it actually is or possesses. Pretentious. Another word is the word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. That word is pirate. As a noun, it means a person who attacks and robs ships at sea. As a verb, it means to use or reproduce another person's work for profit and without permission, usually in contravention of patent or copyright. Pirate. Hola Discovery Learners, so yo, do my yesterday Liz. Hi Discovery Learners, it is I, your teacher Liz. Aquí es tu palabra en español de la semana. What that means is, here is your Spanish word of the week. Su palabra para esta semana es pescado. 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 Which means fish. Pescado, fish, pescado. You can use this word in a phrase. Me gustan los tacos de pescado. Me gustan los tacos de pescado. Me gustan los tacos de pescado. Which means, I like to eat fish tacos. Me gustan los tacos de pescado. I like to eat fish tacos. Me gustan los tacos de pescado. 
I like to eat fish tacos. Como se dice fish in Espanol? Pescado. Si, sí, muy bien. Hasta la semana que viene, Discovery Learners. Be sure to tune in next Monday to learn another Spanish word of the week here on Ability to Learn. Hey, Discovery Learners, it's me, Andrew Lancaster here, and with summertime coming to a close, I whipped up a fun list of pirate movies to watch this week. First up on the seven seas is Pan. This 2015 film is a family movie rated PG. It has a one hour and 51 minute runtime and stars Hugh Jackman as Blackbeard, Levi Miller as Pan, and Gerald Hudlin as Hook, and is available on Hulu. The next film walking the plank is The Goonies. This family adventure film from 1988 has a one hour and 55 minute runtime and a rating of PG. It stars Josh Brolin, Corey Feldman, and Sean Austin. And you can find it on HBO Max. And swapping the C's for stars, next up is Treasure Planet. This film has a rating of PG. It was filmed in 2002 and is a family adventure film with a 1 hour and 35 minute runtime. It stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Emma Thompson, and Martin Short, and you can find it on Disney+. Plus. Well, shiver me timbers, that brings us to our cinematic work of art. This week, it's Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. This PG-13 film is an action adventure from the year 2003. It has a 2 hour and 23 minute runtime. It was directed by Gore Verbinski and stars Johnny Depp, Kira Knightley, Orlando Bloom, and Jeffrey Rush. The movie is based off your favorite ride from Disneyland, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. This film was a technological marvel, and almost 20 years later, it still holds up against current blockbusters, like the Marvel movies such as Endgame. It used revolutionary motion capture technology to bring alive some of the coolest looking zombies we've ever seen. It follows the story of Captain Jack Sparrow, as he tries to get his ship back from his former first mate Barbosa and his zombie crew as they fight to keep possession of the Black Pearl, all while they race to find the stolen gold that has cursed them. The action and stunning special effects wouldn't mean a thing without the adventurous score that drives this fun, spooky adventure through the seven seas and submits its spot as a cinematic work of art. Now playing at the Discovery Theater this Friday, starting at 1 p.m. Aww, we all know what that song means. It means we reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, or to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified about all the fun we're having at Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. This is Teacher Liz signing out. Farewell, Discovery Learners. I will see you next time.